Rome, Athens, Antioch, Crete, Cyprus, Palestine, Syria, and most importantly, Philadelphia. Everywhere has been occupied by god worshippers. However much we torture them, cast them into the oceans, and throw them to the wild lions, we can't seem to finish them off. They've even infiltrated our palaces. How could the religion of Londra penetrate palace walls? <laughs> Julius, you either don't understand or you pretend not to. Is it not true that the Emperor Domitian beheaded both his cousin Fabius Calamens and his spouse Falimia Domitia for the crime of being Christians? Huh? You think they were launderers too? <laughs> In view of this, isn't it wise to protect the royal court? What do you mean? Well, uh, just that we have to be cautious. But I have confidence in the members of my court. I agree with you, though. We must be cautious. His Excellency Maximilian. So, finally, our senior advisor has graced us with his presence. I am at your service, Your Highness. Praise be to you, my Royal Highness Diocletian. I apologize for being late. I hope that you can forgive me. Where were you, Maximilian, until now? Uh, <laughs> hiding the truth from the governor is not possible. Today, I went to see, uh... No, allow me to guess. probably went to see the burning of that man today. Am I right? Burning of a man who, instead of bowing down to the sculpture of the Emperor, defiled it and denounced the other gods. Have I guessed correctly? You have guessed correctly, Your Highness. You were probably witness to an extremely exciting scene. Seeing a ball of fire rising into the sky and hearing the cries and pleas of a man burning in the flames. It's been a sight to see. Watching these scenes brings joy to one. It stills terror in the enemy. But, Maximilian, we see scenes of this kind every single day. Is it appropriate that such events should keep you from this important meeting? To see the burning was not the only reason why I was late. I also went to visit a Roman family. Were they ill? No. They were in need. I sympathized with them and alleviated their poverty. <laughs> Do you really imagine that one can rule through compassion and sympathy? I understand what Your Highness Diocletian is implying, that one must rule with a sword, but in my opinion a sword is not enough. Maximilian, every day we are witness to the emergence of new faiths among the people. How can we suppress these religions without the use of a sword? Religions emerge around the world on a daily basis, and different rulers deal with them differently. Sometimes prudent statesmen utilize compassion to achieve their goal, and sometimes they make use of the sword. But I am of the belief that kindness can do miracles that the sword cannot. You are mistaken, Maximilian. Ruling is only possible with the power of the sword. <laughs> Nothing is achieved through kindness. Kindness can only soothe the bitter aftertaste of the sword. That's all. Your Highness, is it not best we focus on the purpose of this meeting? Excuse me, Your Highness. Can I pose a question to His Excellency Maximilian? Go ahead. 
the family that you went to visit, are they not related to Plutonius? Oh, the man burned to death today for being a Christian? Hmm. A Roman who is in need must be befriended, and one who has done wrong must be punished. I am surprised. You went to go visit and offer support to the family of a Christian criminal. Yes, Your Highness, that is true. But do you believe that an entire family should be punished for the wrongdoing of only one member? Pay very good attention, Maximilian. You know me very well. You know that the value of human life to me is equal to that of an insect. You are husband to my daughter, but you are no dearer to me than my husband. If you haven't heard, ask my daughter. She knows how I plucked out the eyes of traitors and discard them. So be careful what you do. It is enough for me to doubt someone. That will be all. If I were you, I'd be thinking about Lady Helen and her future. I don't understand. What does it have to do with you? The way you are behaving puts her in danger. You must watch what you do. <laughs> and you should be wary of what comes out of your mouth. You are overstepping the mark. Such a mouth might get crushed. Is it possible that Maximilian is a monotheist too? It's hard to believe. We must wait and see what will happen. Maximilian. What? We hear that the judge was telling Julius that someone has revealed Adonia's hideout under torture. I thought so. Do not worry, Galus has gone after Adonia. Let's go. How did Julius find out where you went? Uh, no doubt, he has got someone to stalk me. How much do you think he knows? Without a doubt, he is aware that my wife and I do not worship idols. But I don't know if he is aware of our relationship with monotheists. If he suspects you, does he not suspect us? No, I don't think so. His problem is with Maximilian, not with us. Forgive me for saying so, but has he had his eye on Lady Helen from the very beginning? Yes, I'm aware of this, as is Helen and Diocletian as well. But everyone knew Helen was far too pure to ever consider marrying such a person. One must be wary of him. He has close ties with the Emperor. Considering the grudge he holds against you, if he gets his teeth into your flesh, he will bite down to the bone. Do not worry. He has no evidence against us. And with God's help, he will not have any in the future either. Ah, uh, uh, you know... I was expecting a, a far more negative reaction from Diocletian. That will be his last resort. He is aware that the success of his government in Philadelphia depends on the support of both your father and mine. And because of this, he has asked the Emperor for us to be chosen as his advisors. 
Governor, may I? The making of correct or incorrect decisions can stabilize or jeopardize the pillars of your government. Other than being your son-in-law, Maximilian is also son to Senator Marcellus, a vital figure in the Senate of Rome. In actuality, he is one of the Emperor's closest friends. Deciding what to do about him is highly problematic. Yes, I understand, but his defiance may embolden others. If I sense he poses a threat, he will not be given another chance. In the meantime, I can make use of him. See you tomorrow. See you, See you tomorrow. tomorrow. Hey, let's go. <laughs> I'm lonely. I want someone to play with. <laughs> Settle down. <laughs> oh. Erkmit, your father has arrived. I know, son. I'm sure you have. You are always a good boy. Come, my son. Come on. Your father is not feeling well. You go and play on your own. What's the matter? Has something happened? Plutonius. <gasps> they have killed him? Yes, at your father's orders. They burned him in front of the temple of Apollon. They have ordered his body to remain there on the catapult for three days as a lesson to others. Damn him for causing me such shame. I have renounced him as my father many times. Don't stab me so. Helen, your father's disgrace is not yours to shoulder. You yourself know that for having such a father, I feel great shame and embarrassment. If I ever approach him, it is either for your sake or in order to save the life of another. Otherwise, I have no desire to see him. And I have never blamed you for his wrongdoing. But his crimes have caused me great pain. But what you have seen him do is nothing compared to what I have seen. Today your father, forgive me, Diocletian, threatened me and said that even if I were his eyes, he would not hesitate to rip them out. Yes, it's true. He will, without a doubt, carry out his threats. To you, I am devout, Your Honor. Greetings to you, Your Excellency. You have done good work. Very good. Well done. Hmm. You have a new assignment. Watch over Adonia, the potter, and do not let him out of your sight. Yes, Your Highness. I do not think that the threat posed by Julius may be no less than that posed by Maximilian. What can I say, Your Highness? <laughs> yes, sir. Pay particular attention to those he associates with. I am at your service. Take it. Your Honor. <laughs> Let's go. He 
said that you were witness to how he took out someone's eyes. It seems as if he were referring to the story of your mother. He was telling the truth. I saw it. I saw it all. My mother was from one of the villages near Damascus. All of the villagers were converted to Christianity by Saint Barnabas. In the attack of the Romans, all were killed but my mother. My mother saw with her own eyes how the soldiers of Diocletian beheaded all of her loved ones and killed her mother and, and her father. In, in truth, it was only her beauty which saved her life. He, he forced my mother to marry him. before. You have heard it, but I have seen it with my own eyes. You tell me, how am I to forget it all? <laughs> my mother was scarred. She was always waiting for an opportunity to take revenge on Diocletian and his deities. But because she was being watched in the palace, the opportunity never came. Until we heard that the idols of several deities were defiled in various temples Government forces increased their efforts to arrest the subversives. Until one day. Holy Virgin Mary, this is dangerous! Have mercy upon yourself. Lady, if you get caught, they will rip you to shreds. Do not do this. Don't just stand there. Help me. over the goddess Afrigan. But you have committed treachery against the idols. You've collaborated with her. If it weren't for your help, she would never have gained entrance to the temple. You shall be punished by death. He is not to blame. He merely followed my orders. Set him free! His sin is that he ignored my orders and instead obeyed yours. Off with his head! Now it is your turn to burn in the flame of the gods. You! Do not threaten me with death. Since the day you sacrificed all of my loved ones for these stone idols and beheaded my parents, I swore revenge upon you. I have no fear of death. I will give you one last chance. 
Will you, in the presence of Apollon, denounce Christ's God or not? I worship none other than the one and only God, and know no other than Him. Will you bow down to the gods of Rome and sacrifice for them or not? Damn the gods of Rome! Damn the stone idols and those who worship them! And damn the murderous emperor of Rome! No! O oh God of Anan, please accept the sacrifice I make to you. No, Mother! Oh, Mother! Helen! Oh. My daughter! Oh. No, mighty Apollon! This is the punishment of those who betray the gods! Oh, oh God! Accept this from me! Take mercy upon my sorrowful soul! Lord, I leave my daughter in your hands! Watch over her! I defile the idols for your sake, my lord. No, Receive mother. me. Mother! <laughs> she was burning before my eyes, and there was nothing that I could do. I pray God will allow her soul to join the Virgin Mary. She was a brave woman. I fear for you. Eventually, he will come to know your beliefs. I have nightmares. I don't know what destiny God has in mind for me. Oh, I'm afraid. There's no reason for such distress. Do not worry. Whatever happens, we will be at each other's side. Last night, I dreamt that Diocletian killed you, but you didn't die. He was screaming incessantly. He stood between us, and we couldn't reach each other. There was lots of space between us. I was young. And you had grown old. You were my father. I couldn't tell which of you was my father. He was rejoicing in your death. I'm afraid. Yourself, my dear, Helen, be calm. It is unreasonable to be distraught over a dream. God does not abandon his followers. I have no one else but you. You are not just my husband, my teacher, my coach, my savior. You are my everything. You have brought light into my life. I found hope through you. And I found faith you through you. You were worthy of such insight. I did nothing. I'm proud of you. I had a dream last night that this painting belonged to my mother. I saw my mother but dreamt that I had died. You were wondering whether to accept that my dead body was in the grave or to believe that I was still alive in this painting. I'm even afraid of this painting. Don't fret, sir. A painting is not worthy of such concern. Huh? Take it down and away. <laughs> no. I like this portrait of my wife. I will not allow anyone to take it down. 
<laughs> we are a minority, so we must try to focus our energy on educating our fellow believers and inviting more people to Christianity. For how long will they send our fellow Christians to face death in scores? Why must we remain silent? In my opinion, withstanding these hardships at this time is in itself a form of devotion to God. If you do not provoke the people against the government, confrontations will never arise between the Christians and Romans. Hasn't our Lord Jesus Christ advised us against surrendering to oppressors? You do not have the right to endanger the lives of others without just cause. Power belongs to God only, and he will bestow it upon whomever he wants. All those who possess power have been granted it by God. God Almighty bestows his powers upon his prophets and the righteous. doubt the power possessed by tyrants is satanic not divine do Abraham and Nimrod Moses and Pharaoh Jesus and Herod possess equal powers <laughs> hello man of God hello welcome Galus I hope life is treating you well how is his majesty Maximilian doing it is he who has sent me here he said your hideout has been discovered. You should leave here as soon as possible. You mean... danger is that close? Maximilian does not speak without good reason. Hurry up, we mustn't waste time. All right. You go ahead, I will come later. I must send these people away first. Tell them to leave cautiously. This place might be under surveillance. Brothers, I have just been informed that this place is not safe. You must leave cautiously and peacefully now. In three days we will meet again in the underground chambers of the cemetery outside of town. By behaving this way, you are acting against Christ's teachings and endangering people's lives. May God guide us all. If they attack and kill people there, who will be held accountable? We must have faith in God. His will shall prevail. Master, I will stay to protect you, if you need me to. Uh, no. Go ahead. Do not worry. I will be leaving too. God be with you.
Nothing. I was just buzzing by. You shouldn't have been. If I catch you here again, I will not spare your life. Do you understand? Be gone! What news is there, Matthias? Julius, your highness. As a will, the Jew has news. What are you doing here? Did I not tell you to watch over Adonia? Yes, you did. But minutes ago, someone in a carriage helped him uh, escape. And I could not keep up with them on, on foot. Why were you on foot? Well, there was no need for a horse. I did not think they would help him flee. How has news leaked out of the palace? Did you recognize the coachman? His head was covered with a turban. But I believe it was Maximilian's carriage. Go watch Maximilian's home. Find out whether it was the same carriage. Go. Yes, right away, Your Highness. Hey, hey! Hey! I must be back in town before sunset. Do not worry, there is time. Forgive me, Your Highness. Can I pose a question? Matthias, you're one of my closest friends. Ask whatever you wish. What is the reason for the conflict between you and Maximilian? I will tell you this because I trust you. I was fond of Helen for years, and Diocletian knew this. But with the arrival of Maximilian, Diocletian offered his daughter to him on a silver platter. From that day forth, I vowed to prove that Maximilian was not worthy of Helen, that he is no more than a traitor. It will be proven, and I have evidence against him which I will reveal when the time comes. If he does not believe me, I will take the evidence to the Emperor Hadrian. Why did Diocletian and Lady Helen choose Maximilian over you? It's to do with our level of influence in Rome. Maximilian is the son of a Roman senator. And I, the son of a former Roman army officer. Which of us can better act as the backbone of Diocletian's government? Hmm? I am sorry, sir. Let's go. Hey! 
several days until calm is restored and the Romans are distracted. I will bring you meals every day. No, it's not just me. I cannot abandon my responsibilities to save my own skin. There will always be time for meetings and for guiding the people. But I will be meeting with my fellow believers in the underground chambers of the cemetery in three days. You must be careful then. Hey! Do not worry, Galus. Could I speak with you a while? You have my attention, I'm listening. No, you're not listening. Who knows where your mind is wandering? Forgive me, Atene. The news of the Emperor's visit to Philadelphia has excited me. One error, and everything will fall apart. All of our hopes will be dashed. Instead of such aspirations, I wish you would focus on more important matters. Oh, Atene. Atene, you do not understand. You have no idea how the Emperor's presence can solidify my government in Rome. And I'm also reliving many memories. What days I spent alongside Hadrian. It feels as if the Mesopotamian War was, was yesterday. What an honor. But at that time, I was a commander of the Legion. Hadrian ordered the chickens to be released from their cages the priest to scatter seeds and make a prediction. Dear God, how the chickens fell upon those seeds. It was a sign that we would be the victors of the war. Atene, a great victory was awaiting us. What an auspicious foretelling. What an auspicious foretelling! <laughs> Afterwards, Hadrian strode confidently toward the town and said, If there are any gods present in this city, they had better listen up. I'm calling on you to steer clear of the houses and streets of this city and to rain sorrow upon them. Do not defend these worthless people against our spears, arrows and swords and allow us to conquer this city, to be victorious. Victory! 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 I knew you weren't listening to me. You are daydreaming. All right, all right. I'm listening. Go ahead. Who do you think Hadrian will choose as his successor? No one knows. Didn't you say you have a long history of friendship with Hadrian? My memories with him are always alive in mind. Every second, I am constantly reminiscing those days. I did not intend to revive your old memories. No? I was implying that you make use of his friendship to the best of your ability. How do you suggest I do so? Ask him to choose you as his successor out of respect for your age-old friendship, and as a reward for saving his life. <laughs> That's quite a bold ambition. However, one can aspire to having it realized. There's nothing to lose. Why a bold ambition? Do you doubt your worthiness and prudence, or is it your friendship with Hadrian that you doubt? Neither. Rather, I doubt the Senate of Rome will agree. Even if Hadrian does, they shall not. But there is nothing to lose. You take a chance. You have no idea, dear Clitian, how wonderful it would be to take the throne as the First Lady of Rome. It is a dream I cannot expel from my mind. 
So I suggest you put yourself to work. Hadrian's wife Sharon is accompanying him on the journey. Try to make friends with her. Women play a vital role in their husband's decisions. Hmm. Though I have no desire to see her. No. It is not a bad suggestion. No. You can be sure I will. His Highness Julius. Greetings, Your Highness, Diocletian. Julius, what news of Tau? My only concern is for the palace. News from within has been taken outside. <laughs> 